Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to do a live test of Google's new model, Gemini. So that's right, you heard it right. Google just came out a new model, Gemini, and it's a multimodal model. And I can't wait to test out how this model perform and what does it do in application in front of you guys with live code. So with that being said, let's get started. So this is the notebook Google provided on Colab. I just opened it up. And I'll drop the link for you guys. If you guys want to play around with it, feel free to check it out. So if you know Python, I think this is a pretty straightforward code. You just need your API key, which you can apply on Google's AI Studio. I already did it, so I'm not going to walk through all the trouble of getting that. But you just need a Google account. Log in there, get your API key, and you can just copy paste here. Or you can use the user data to have a more secure way to get your API key in there. Uh, but that's the first step. Once you have the API key, here we have a couple of methodologies. Here, we're going to use a bash script, and we're going to make a curl call. Curl, C-U-R-L, means client URL. It means that I want to interact with the Google's Gemini API using a URL. It's essentially a website. So it starts with HTTPS, generative language, .google APIs, so on and so forth. So that's how you interact with it. But here it's just a text-to-text -text model, right? Not that interesting. We already have previous models such as bar that's already given that capability. Here, what's interesting thing is give an image and then have Google's API Gemini model to recognize what's in that picture. So after this chunk of code down here, it actually has uh, this function here to allow you to essentially upload any picture that you want in your Python environment. So here I upload a JPEG file. It's just a picture upload in the environment. And I use pillow library in Python to read this picture, resize to 512. And then this gives you that image object. So now this image, which is a girl smiling in the picture, which is a random picture I download from Google, it's in there, right? It's in the Python environment as the IMG object. Now what's going to happen is I want to make a request JSON file using this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another bash script and this script will create this dictionary, which then save as a request.json file. And we want to make sure that this picture is base 64, right? And we do all of that in a bash script. Run that, create that file, we're going to make another curl request by sending into that JSON file. Uh, of course, here you need to you know, have your API key enter correctly. So once all that's done, you'll see this output that says, oh yeah, the other picture shows a young woman smiling and this is where she's wearing, so on and so forth. It's able to give us a very accurate and detailed description from the picture. So in other words, it's picture to text model, right? Something like that is interesting. So I thought, hey, this is the opportunity to build some sort of an application to allow users to take a picture of anything they want and send that picture to Google's API, make that API call. Once we get the feedback back, we display that feedback output on the screen near the picture. So that's what this video is about. But to do that, I need everything in Python, right? because I can't really work with bash script inside of another UI or some sort of application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite everything in Python. So I need a couple of helper functions here, and then I need to make an API call. And then all of these helper functions, I need to get that into some sort of application. And here we're going to choose Streamlit application as an example. So let's swap screen. And let's look at this. So on the left panel, I already have this app deployed, which is why you can see the side of my face because I'm using another webcam here. And on the right-hand side, I have my VS Code open. So I have my VS Code open. I get into the correct virtual environment with all the packages installed. And then here, I have all the helper functions written in the script called app.py. Once that's done, you can see here, I have the first helper function to convert the image to bytes and then resize it. That's another helper function. And also I have a helper function that convert image to base 64, which is the correct format required by that Google API call. And then after that, 
you actually have to make the API call, uh, assuming that you have some sort of API key inside of the script. And then in the end, you're just going to have to get the response back and essentially extract the text. So those are the helper functions. Now let's take a look at the code for the actual app. So the app, I want to keep it very simple, right? Here, as you can see, there's a title page. Uh, that's what's going on here. There's a stringlet.title. And then there's a place where you actually have to take a picture, right? So here we have a st.camera input, take a picture. So if the picture exists, not none means that exists, then we're gonna do something with the picture, right? So we take the picture, uh, we say that's a capture picture, resize it, convert into base64. Those are the helper functions that I defined above, right? And then of course, check your API key here. Of course, I'm gonna hide my API key, but for all of you guys who want to adopt the script, obviously you need to have some sort of API key in there. And then if the API key exists, let's make that API call, right? So here, call Gemini API, get the response back, and then extract the text from that response. Uh, so here it's a giant dictionary, which is a giant JSON file that is the feedback from the API call from Google Gemini API and already went to the dictionary, down to the rabbit hole, turn out that you have to make all these dictionary key calls uh, to get to that final text, which is the description that Google's Gemini is creating based on the picture that I'm sending to. So of course, in the end, we gotta write the text out on screen, right? Because here's a picture, you know, you gotta write something out just so that you know that API call is success or that it's not successful. And then you have some sort of uh, fail proof, right? You know, else if this thing doesn't exist, uh, say something, right? You know, no response from API. Uh, or if API key doesn't exist or that it's incorrect, uh, say that it's not correct, right? It's not set correctly. So with all that being said, I go to my terminal, run this Streamly application. That's what you guys will see on the left-hand side. Uh, so this is not public yet because I'm deploying this on a local host. But let's take a look, right? So I'm going to have to do something in front of the camera so that we know that this thing is working correctly, right? So let's just play with it. So I'm going to do a thumb up. And then here, we're going to send this picture, which is a picture that I just took live to Google API. And it says, hey, it's a picture of a man giving a thumb up. Great. That makes sense, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. That's the sentence that it says. So it's perfectly correct. Now I'm going to do another version, right? Let's clear the photo. Now I'm going to make a sad face, right? Let's see how this works. So I don't know if that's a sad face. I'm trying my best, right? Let's see what Google says. Aha. Uh -huh. So it says this is a picture of a selfie of a man with short black hair and the brown eyes. He's making a sad face. Look at that. He's wearing a black t-shirt and he's standing in front of a white wall. OK, so all that detail makes sense, right? So there you guys, as a wrap up in this video, we talked about how to make an API call to Google's Gemini API via bash script using curl or using Python. We put together a Streamly application by making this API call on data that's a live picture from webcam and we're able to get the feedback back from Google's API. Hope you like this video, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next episode.